And the third speaker is Mr. Padi Adala. He says that you'd like to be more understanding and empathetic to people's situations and believes that with these two virtues, it will be easier to share knowledge and help whenever necessary without looking down on others. To introduce our third speaker and give us the speech objectives is a distinguished Toastmaster, Mr. Maxwell Kihara. Over to you, Mr. Maxwell Kihara. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. John Ford once said, you speak better or you speak well if your mouth can communicate the message of the heart. And that is the heart of this project that Paddy Allen is attempting this evening. Paddy Allen is attempting the second project on the CC manual, Competent Communication Manual. The aim of this project is to ensure that you have a structure. You see, human beings have this limited capacity and the ability for them to understand and grasp what you said is made easy if your speech can be one, logical, if number two, you can have a particular flow. Today, Paddy is attempting to do ex exactly that, share an idea in an orderly manner. And the objectives of the speech are as follows. First, to select appropriate an appropriate outline for this particular speech, make the message lucid and clear for all and sundry. And of course, use appropriate transition for us to understand when he's moving from one idea to another. The title of his speech is Why Rules? Paddy Allen. Paddy Allen, Why Rules? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the Toastmasters community. It is indeed a great pleasure to be standing in front of you, or rather to be seated in front of you and your cameras. Allow me to begin by posing a question to you, my dear audience. Who are we? Please, be kind to spare a moment to think about the answer to this question. Once again, I ask, who are we? This is a question that is often asked in different settings of society, and the answer varies. Now, I'm going to tell you that who we are, or who you deem yourself to be, is based on the principles that you apply to yourself and the behaviors that you live by. In short, it is defined by the rules that you decide to abide by in life. The story is told about the golden calf. The Israelites had just left Egypt and arrived at Mount Sinai in the desert. Moses left to go up the mountain and fetch further instructions from God. In the absence of Moses, a vacuum was created because of the absence of a leader. Quickly, the Israelites descended upon immorality, creating idols, in this case the golden calf, and worshipping it. When Moses came back a few days later, he was disappointed in what he saw, and he rebuked the Israelites. Later in my speech, I'm going to give reference to this story. In our everyday life, we encounter rules. You should do this. You should do that. You cannot do this and you cannot do that. Please, note the difference. You should not and you cannot because we react differently to different rules and there are different consequences to different rules. A thief will steal and end up in jail while a drunkard will drink his liver out and end up miserable. Those are two different consequences. A thief is going to lose his freedom because of theft while a drunkard is going to lose his purpose in life because of the brown bottle. So as you choose the rules that you abide by, then you need to look into the consequences of these rules. Today, I would like to put across just two rules for you to look into. The first rule is to stand up straight with your shoulders back. What does it mean to stand up straight with your shoulders back? It involves observing the terrible responsibility that life has given or put upon your shoulders with your eyes wide open. It means that you are voluntarily willing to transform the chaos that is this life into the potentials of realities of order. It means adopting the burden of self-conscious vulnerability 
and putting an end to being a child. And what does a child do? A child cannot comprehend the state of being finished. A child cannot comprehend morality. And a child only mildly comprehends consequences of choices that are made in life. And thus, you need to stand up straight with your shoulders back and take up these responsibilities bravely. The second rule is that you should treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. Take a case of a dog that is sick and is taken to the veterinary doctor. As the owner of this dog, you are going to make sure that this dog is treated and the medicine that is prescribed by the doctor is followed to the latter so that this dog can get better. In the same light, I would like you to take care of, help and be good to yourself like someone you love or someone you love. Thus, you should conduct yourself in habitual order because it is habits that dictate order and eliminate chaos. Ask yourself these questions. Who am I? What do I do with my free time? What do I do to increase my health and strengthen my body? You need to know where you are so that you can chart a course and know or decide where you are going. You need to know who you are so that you understand yourself and know your limits. And finally, you need to know where you're going so that you can limit the amount of chaos that is going to come your way. As I conclude, I would like to go back to my story, of the Golden Cup. And what do we learn from this story? Indeed, it reminds us about rules, that we quickly become slaves to our desires and passions in the absence of rules. And there's nothing freeing about that. Somebody might argue out that rules limit our freedom. You cannot do this, you should not do this, and you cannot do that. But there is no freedom in the chaos that results in the presence or rather in the absence of rules. Thus, fellow to masters, as you think about who you are, then you should ask yourself about the principles that you have chosen to live by. Because it is these rules that you set in your life that are going to determine where you end up. If you set rules and not abide by them, then there will be consequences. And I would like to tell you that I wish I knew is not a fun story to tell. And thus, be objective as it is the most important thing. Be truthful in setting your rules. A society is defined by its way of life. That is the culture. Just as an individual is defined by the principles that they choose to live by. And finally, it is not your beliefs that define you. Rather, it is the actions that you take in defense of these beliefs. A quote from Edward Snowden. And today, it was masters, as you set out to define your rules that you live by, then I wish you the best. As the last word, please, as the wheatstone, it's to a sword, then our brains are to books. So read widely and set the best rules. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Paddy Adala, for your white knuckle speech. Thank you so much. I must say, I did enjoy it.